four burned to death in early morning fire in Sabah. Good evening and thanks for joining us for the evening edition of News on 2 with me, Amin Carlos. The fire at a house in Tanjong Sipat near Sipang, Selangor, which claimed the lives of two senior citizens and two young boys, has taken a morbid turn after police discovered slash marks on the victims. The victims are believed to have been murdered and set on fire. And Selangor CID Chief SAC Fazil Ahmad said in a statement today that the cause of death will, however, be confirmed after the post-mortem. The post-mortem is expected to be carried out on Thursday. He added that the case was being investigated under Section 302 of the Penal Code for Murder. The victims have been identified as a 73-year-old man and a 68-year-old woman, while the boys were aged 9 and 3. In a video making its rounds on social media, a 12-year-old boy believed to be the sole survivor of the incident claims mask intruders entered the house and murdered his brothers and grandparents. He said he was hiding in the toilet throughout the ordeal and managed to escape the fire when the intruders left. Well, meanwhile, in Yankara, an elderly lady was burned to death after her residence in Kampong Sinkir Laut was burnt to the ground. The Kada Fire and Rescue Department in a statement disclosed that the incident occurred at around 11.30 a.m. today. And the victim, identified as Fauzi Abdullah, aged 69, died of suffocation due to smoke inhalation. And two fire engines, along with 28 personnel from the Yan Fire and Rescue Station, as well as the Gua Chumpada Station, rushed to the scene as soon as they were notified. Quick action by the firefighters managed to eliminate and prevent the fire from spreading. The body was later handed over to the police and sent to the Yan Hospital for post-mortem. The oil trajectory monitoring system, which will be handled by the Environmental Department, will be able to monitor the oil movement in the event of a large-scale oil spill. Now, any information received from the system will be used to design strategies and ways to control any oil spills from happening. Deputy Natural Resources and Environment Minister Dato Sri Dr. Hamim Samuri said the ministry together with the National Contingency Plan of Oil Spill Control, RKKTM, and the State Coastal Cleanup Action Unit are ready to face any oil spill crisis in the country's waters. Menyatakan dengan jelas mengenai kaedah dan saluran komunikasi, pemantauan, pergerakan minyak, strategi kawalan tumpahan, pembersihan dan juga senarai stockpile peralatan kawalan. kawalan. Each state has also prepared its own state coastal cleanup action plan and will be used as and when it is needed. Datu Hamim said this in reply to a question by Senator Datu Abdullah Saleh. Since 2013, 1.8 billion ringgit of government allocations has been spent on 161 upgrading projects of 84 government hospitals, namely the purchase of new beds, additional intensive care unit equipment, and installing new elevators for the convenience of patients and visitors. Dari segi health financing, tuan betul, kita kerajaan mengeluarkan subsidize 98% daripada kos kesemuanya. Uh, contohnya pada tahun 2015 uh, kita belanja 25 bilion ringgit kutipan dalam kutipan ni seringgit lima ringgit yang kita kutip ni uh, dalam 650 juta sahaja tak sampai 1 bilion pun kos banyak ini sekarang kita dapat lagi tambahan tidak tahu nampaknya kita meningkat tambahan bajet kita lebih kurang 2 juta ringgit Dr. Sri Hilmi also told the Dewan Negara that all hospitals aged 30 years and above had successfully undergone assessment on the safety aspects. He also said that under the 2018 budget, 100 million ringgit had been approved for more upgrading works, especially on the safety aspect, namely the electrical wiring system and fire emergency control at all the 84 hospitals. 20 urban transformation centers, UTCs, have successfully managed to save about 2 billion ringgit by transforming underutilized government-owned buildings. Now, Deputy Minister of Finance, Atoli Chi Leong, since 2013, these UTCs have been the permanent homes of more than 30 government departments and agencies. 
According to Dato Lee, the services provided by the UTC, which was conceptualized under the National Blue Ocean Strategy and BOSS, had benefited more than 50 million people. Initiative UTC sangat unik memantangkan ia beroperasi mencangkal waktu operasi biasa setiap hari termasuk hujung minggu. Dato Lee added that apart from the UTCs, the Rural Transformation Centers, RTC, and Mobile Community Transformation Centers, CTC, had also proved to be beneficial to the people, especially those living in rural areas. The Dewan Negara was today told that 21,739 cases of accidents resulting in the victims losing their abilities to continue working were recorded as of September this year. And according to Deputy Human Resources Minister, that is Sri Ismail Mutalib. In 2015, the figure was 25,550 and rose to 27,914 in 2016. Dr. Sri Ismail said the number of workers involved in accidents while commuting to and from work increases every year. In light of the situation, the Social Security Organization, SOXO, had implemented 199 programs as part of their efforts to promote safety at work and while on the road and reduce the number of accidents involving workers. Justru itu, Pekeso terus mempertingkatkan usaha melaksanakan program-program pencegahan kemalangan jalan raya berdasarkan kalau kolaborasi Antara Pekeso, Institut Keselamatan dan Kesihatan Pekerjaan, NIOS, Institut Penyelidikan Keselamatan Jalan Raya, Malaysia, MIROS, Polis Diraja Malaysia, PDRM, Jabatan Keselamatan dan Kesihatan Pekerjaan, JKKP, termasuk badan-badan NGO. DAP member Dato Zaid Ibrahim today appeared at the Federal Police Headquarters in Bukit Aman to give his statement over his remarks on Twitter posted on December 5th. Now, the former cabinet minister arrived at 9.30 a.m. to give his statement to the police criminal investigation department for about 30 minutes and was seen leaving Bukinaman about 11 a.m. Now, Dr. Zaid, a lawyer, when met by reporters after giving his statement, said the investigation revolved around his tweets on December 5th, which, according to him, was his personal views. Nevertheless, he said he's satisfied in waiting for the outcome of the investigation and that Zaid's comment caused an uproar, especially among UMNO leaders and members who called for action to be taken against him for his criticism of the Sultan. However, he said he had explained to the police that the tweet was his response to the ruler about Tun Mahathir's statement. Dr. Zaid was accompanied by legal counsel Amarjit Singh Sidhu and several DAP leaders. An administrative assistant at the Dietetic and Meals Department of the Sultana Nur Zahira Hospital was sentenced to six years jail and fined 1.075 million ringgit on charges of making six false claims amounting to 211.646 ringgit. Now, Nur Mazira Mukhtar was found guilty under Section 18 of the MACC Act 2009. And according to the charge sheet, Nur Mazira had made four false claims for the supply of eggs worth 113,066 ringgit under the name of a company, KAB Adil Resources, which was owned by her husband, Mohamed Fikri Izani. She also made another two false claims worth 98,580 ringgit to supply and deliver milk to the hospital, despite the hospital having a contract with another supplier. It was discovered that the supply never arrived, although the accused claim otherwise. The court also ordered an extra six years in jail if the accused failed to pay the fine. Nur Mazida's husband, who was arrested earlier in August, was, however, acquitted. Authorities have found the second body in the boat capsize incident at Batuan Tengah, Kota Tinggi, Johor, on Sunday. And the body of Tan Sun Heng, 35, was recovered by Indonesian authorities at about 1 p.m. today in the waters of Lagui in Pulau Bintan. Now, yesterday, the Indonesian authorities recovered the body of Chang Chong Kuok, 51, at Tanjung Berakit, Pulau Bintan Beach area, and Malaysia Maritime Enforcement Agency, MMEA Regional Deputy Director of Operations, Maritime Captain Sanifa Yusof, in confirming the recovery, said both bodies have been sent to the hospital Bayangkara Bolda in Batam for further action. The SER operation involved a few MMEA boats, the Royal Malaysian Navy, Marine Police, with the help of Indonesian authorities. Now, the search area was concentrated from Pengirang waters to Batuan Tengah, with an area totaling 150 nautical miles. Now, both the victims were believed to have drowned after their boat capsized while they were fishing. 
A special officer to Sungai Manik State Executive Councillor was killed when the car he was driving crashed head-on with a lorry along Jalan Bota Kanan Telo Intan this morning. And the victim, Ahmad Nur Al-Zaidin, Ahmad Azudin, 35, together with his wife, Nur Haslina Abdul Razak, 27, and his brother, Nur Azira Ahmad Azudin, 24, died at the scene. And Perak Tengah Police District Chief of Police Super, Super, Superintendent Muhammad Zainal Abdullah said, the car which was heading from Kampong Gajah to Telo Intan crashed into the lorry from the opposite direction, causing both vehicles to land in a ditch. And he added, due to the impact of the crash, all three victims inside the car died on the spot. Mama Zainal said that the bodies have been sent to the Changkat Melintang Hospital for post-mortem. And the 25-year-old lorry driver and his passenger, however, escaped unhurt and have been arrested under Section 41 of the Road Transport Act, 1987. A 67-year-old woman was killed in Cebu when the car driven by her husband crashed into a bulldozer early today. And according to Cebu Police Chief Assistant Commissioner Zailani Amit, the victim was identified as Shiki Chuo. Now, the incident occurred when the duo were on their way from Sungai Bidut heading towards Sungai Merah. And the car collided into the rear end of a slow-moving bulldozer in front of them. Kicho died instantly at the scene. In another incident, a 61-year-old man died when the lorry he was driving fell into a drain in front of his home at 7.30 a.m. today. The victim, identified as Kong Xion Fo, died on the spot. Well, coming up, Binasat aims to raise 39.55 million ringgit in proceeds from IPO. As usual, let's take a look at the latest weekly fuel price of Active Midnight. The Communications and Multimedia Ministry has built 20,206 telecommunication towers and developed 841 One Malaysia Internet Centers or PI Satuem at low coverage areas. The Ministry will continue to develop 16 additional PI Satuem around the country which is expected to be completed in the first quarter of 2018. Speaking in Parliament today, its Deputy Minister, Dr. Sri Jailani Johari, said that a One Malaysia People's Cable System, SKR Satu M, has also been developed to increase the broadband speed, especially in Sabah and Sarawak. Digital inclusion, ataupun dengan izin, keterangkuman digital, terutamanya di kawasan terpencil, kawasan pendalaman dan luar bandar, menjadi keutamaan kerajaan yang dilaksanakan melalui SKMM, dan untuk tujuan ini, tambahan 1 bilion uh, ringgit lagi dipuntukkan seperti mana yang diumumkan oleh Yang Mak Berhormat Perdana Menteri bagi bajet 2018 untuk memperluaskan dan menaik taraf infrastruktur komunikasi di kawasan luar bandar terutamanya di Sabah dan Sarawak. Datuk Sri Jailani said a total of 13.7 billion ringgit has been spent to upgrade the communication infrastructures in the country under the universal service provider beginning 2008 until now. Meanwhile, an additional 1 billion ringgit will be allocated next year to expand and upgrade the communication infrastructure in rural areas. Bursa Malaysia Ace Market Bound, Binasat Communications Burhad aims to raise 39.55 million ringgit from its initial public offering, IPO, of new shares to finance the telecommunication support service providers expansion. Now, Binasat, at its prospectus launch today, said that its tentative listing date is January 8, 2018. According to the prospectus, the group offers support services for satellite, mobile and fiber optic telecommunication networks. Chief Operating Officer Zulamran Hamad said its IPO comprises a public issue of 85.98 million new shares and an offer for sale of 40 million existing shares at 46 cents each. We are actually involved with the uh, with providing the services, engineering services for all three main sectors. First, uh, we provide the services, support services for satellite, 
and uh, mobile as well as uh, fiber optic. So uh, our future plan will be in line with the three core business. Bin Asad said it planned expansion includes setting up a teleport and overseas expansion in Laos, Myanmar and Vietnam. The company said 14.36 million ringgit will be used to finance the teleport project while 10.79 million ringgit will be used for working capital. The group has also allocated 1.5 million ringgit to expand into Laos, Myanmar and Vietnam. The Inland Revenue Board, IRB, denies that the agency fee received in accordance with the provisions of Act 533 was in the form of commission from the total tax collection. In a press statement, the IRB confirms that the determination of the fees received is very clear and the IRB has consistently provided justification to the government of the actual budget needed by the IRB to carry out its function as provided for under Act 533. Now, determination of agency fees is based on operating expenses and IRB development costs annually involving emoluments, building rental fees, utilities, maintenance of buildings, hospitality services and the acquisition of buildings or a new technology system. In addition, all matters involving the agency fees received and IRB expenses are regulated by the Board of Directors, which is responsible in ensuring high corporate governance. Members of the IRB Board of Directors are composed of representatives of government, corporate and private agencies with experience and knowledge in the fields of finance, commerce, tax or law. According to a statement by IRB since its inception, the government and the IRB signed an agreement, among other things, which determined the payment method of fees for services provided by the IRB to the government. That concludes this evening's news on to in our top story. Erdogan urges world to recognize East Jerusalem as capital of Palestine. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. I'm Mohamed Amin Carlos, and stay tuned to TV2. Good night.